What's up, my folks? I hope everyone is doing good. I'll let y'all check out Lulu, Miss Wiggles, when she was in shape. That was right. Well, she was about halfway in shape right there, it looks like. He's got a better one he sent me when she was right before hunting season, but I can't get it a damn download. But uh, I hope y'all are doing real great and everyone's doing good and uh, getting along well. Uh, I want to address a couple things real quick uh, about some comments, you know. Uh, it's always the same old ones too, man. It is always, it trips me out. Look, I got 10 or 12 videos probably explaining chains and why they're important and everything. I might've took some of them down. I took a lot of bullshit videos down. I probably erased quarter million views one time with just videos that just were really no, of no relevance other than explaining why we do things, but use your heads. It's always the ones. I look, man, I'm a studier of people and animals and all that shit of what makes it tick. And I think, man, what makes a motherfucker think like this? And I'll look, you know, sometimes they'll have a the shit. And it's always the same type. Always the same type. They always got the same shit on. It'll be vegetarian shit and social justice warriors and uh fucking ridiculous shit. you know another thing i always see is ted talks this must be a thing with ted talks is a following of, of people that are really higher educated that couldn't pour piss out of a bucket um anyway i just want to give a few people some shouts uh, uh shane they are a couple guys interested in some of that stuff that edda and uh blackberry stuff you got um, I've had some questions that I get in touch with you. I lost your number. I don't know what it, where it went. And Bubba from Carolina, I wrote your number on a board last week to call you back, and I can't find the damn board now. Give me a call back. I can't. And and I've seen a couple comments that you guys have been trying. You get covered up, guys. I get covered up with the dumb shit, and I just get off of it, and, you, and it just goes down, and I lose you. Just keep on doing it, okay? And if, when I give my number, call me and call me and call me, whatever. It, don't, it ain't going to piss me off. Okay, it won't. I mean, y'all don't have to think like that. Because I always get the, you know, I don't mean to bother you, but you ain't bothering me. If I don't see your call, and shit, it just ain't bothering me. I'll call you back when I can. Don't worry about it. Don't bother me. I don't care. Um, anyway, let's talk a little bit about gameness. Okay? I've had a lot of questions about this and uh, from all different angles. And I've had some questions about the breeding charts and all that. The you know breeding coefficients and all that shit or whatever look first of all those charts are something fun to look at and say "Ooh, look at this or look at this or how many times this is and shit but in the real world guys i'm telling you this whole game is this is a game of to separate a fool from his money okay you can buy that stuff if you want to and put those fancy things and you can do that but if you don't start out with good shit you ain't gonna have good shit i don't care what that chart says that chart's irrelevant okay in the real world i'm not talking about cyber world a lot of people are living in that right now i'm trying to explain y'all these dogs are real flesh and bone animals okay they're animals they raise up from a little baby to a mature animal and there's a lot that goes on in between them and you can take two brothers Two litter mate brothers that will have the same chart as one will have as the other unless they literally DNA them motherfuckers. And then still, I'm not sure. There's a lot of different variables. But as far as them charts go, two brothers. One brother might be a producer and a good dog himself. One might be shit all the way around as a producer and a dog. But them charts are going to be the same. Now, who do you think is going to have better dogs? The guy that bred the good shit off of it or the guy that bred the garbage off of it? That's what I'm saying. The only way to get good dogs is to breed good, your your good dogs and your dogs that are producing what you want and, or, and have the traits as what you want to produce. Okay, that's the only way to do it. There ain't no. If it was easy as fucking typing in a program, it would have been done. Just like all the people who ask us about the chain out. Says you, why you got to put the poor dog on the chain? If it was as easy as letting them just run around the fucking yard, and we would do that. Okay, there's a reason why every, it, it's a long, drawn-out process. It literally is a science to it, but it's a science of instinct, of gut feeling, of being there, of experience. You know what I'm saying? Of knowing, just knowing that that was going to work. And then sometimes even what you know, you find out you don't know shit. Okay, I'm just being honest with you guys. 
Um, if you start out with garbage, I don't care what the damn chart or paper say. If it's garbage dog and he's producing garbage, a lot of these higher lines, they produce themselves a lot. Like what? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If the dog has a cur out of it, he's probably going to produce a lot of curs. You know what I mean? It's just the truth. That's why these the traits that you're after, you hold on to those traits and breed, breed the offspring that have those traits, the offspring that have the other. You know what I'm saying? It's a, that's how you do it. All right, this is that bitch here that's bred back to bullet. This is a picture of her there when she now she of course she's two foot from me in the brood pen, but uh, that's what she looks like in shape. Like I expect these dogs to be hard nosed ass bulldogs, strong, powerful, hard biting dogs with with a deep game, hard and biting dogs. I expect them. That's what they are. You know what I mean? Um. It's, it's that's how you do it and like when I go to now their offspring the best of those offspring will try to breed those back to other good traits and qualities of the, the same general eyed family you know what I mean that's how you breed dogs not a chart and don't listen I mean you can do what you want your money your time your your life but I found that uh you're wasting a lot of that doing it that way I mean I've seen it be wasted that way now as far as gameness okay what gameness is I always hear people put gameness as uh like they compare it to the old the old pit days, you know, that's the best way to compare it. Like the dog that could do whatever it took to win, you know, that's the game dog. The dog that'll just come out on top no matter what it takes and win. Well, and that's not necessarily true. A lot of the dogs that won weren't the gamer dog, okay? A lot of the dogs that lost were the gamer dogs. I mean, um and and, and we have a fickle mindset when people get in these dogs they get real fickle as the older you get you get smarter about it and realize it and you'll see these guys their mindsets will change some of them will act hard nose you know to sell puppies oh they're dead game i got dead game dogs dead game dogs dead game dogs bullshit if they're dead game they ain't breeding unless you pulled from every one of them and you know it's just that's a bullshit okay dead dog don't they have puppies all right. The best you can hope for is real deep game, hard nosed, good, talented bulldogs with high ability that can bite their ass off and breed underwater. That's what we breed for. Good usable dogs. Okay. Um, you can't. A, a dog is not. He's not given like twenty five percent of this, twenty five percent of that, twenty five percent of that, twenty five percent of that, and that makes the dog. It's not how it all works. Okay. It's different. Like we're. It's such a fickle group they don't understand like they'll lump a dog a cur as a dog that's a five minute shit piss runners up cur in the same category as a dog that that uh gave it all he had for two and a half three hours and stopped on his feet lights is on nobody's home but that motherfucker's still a cur you see what i'm saying they're they're different it's it, they're they're very uh the understanding and the level of game is dogs. I would say that a dog is not born game. Okay. He's not given a certain amount of game. That's because his parents. Okay. Otherwise the puppies would be dead game when they come out to fucking womb. Think about it now. That's why you don't that people preach against ruining puppies and starting them too young and letting them catch rough hogs when they're puppies still and all that shit. Uh, because it'll ruin them because they're not mature enough to accept their gameness. They haven't built their confidence up. They haven't. You build a dog. That's what I mean by the dog man makes the dog. You can take two brothers and give them one to a good dog man that does right by a dog and he'll have a good dog. You can give one to a dipshit that puts him in a box and doesn't give him no attention. He'll take him out and think he's got a bulldog because of his papers and he's got a piece of shit. You see what I'm saying? And the other end of that coin is you can take a good dog that's already a good dog and give him to a piece of shit and he can ruin him in about eight and a half weeks. I've seen it done many times, you know. So just think about all these things before when you're when you're looking at these dogs. It really is a a, a, a far away chess match, you know. You you that you can't see all the moves to. That's what this is. And you got to be able to read them dogs. You know, you can't, I'm, I'm not the one that's going to put the dog that went three hours in the same category as a dog that went three minutes and quit. You see what I'm saying? I just never, I couldn't ever do that because honestly, it's not in the same category. Think about it, guys. Now, a lot of dogs that aren't game, like I had a strain of, I had several strain of dogs before 
that I didn't think were game. This is the first time in my life that I think my dogs are pretty deep game. All of my dogs that I got, I'm pretty sure they're pretty deep game. They should throw deep game dogs if we if we keep them in a good circle that they're able to catch hogs and we can see what their abilities and their talents are and all. And the heat, the heat, I'm a firm believer that the heat will make a dog quit more so than anything else. You know what I mean? The heat and exhaustion will make one quit. That'll make more dogs quit than anything. That's when you see them with their lights are on and no one's home. And I firmly believe they don't realize what's going on anymore. As being a man myself that's been in that situation where I have worked myself that hard, where I literally was fucking bear caught and didn't know what the fuck was going on, walk like stumbling. You know what I mean? I know what that's like, and that's what you see when them dogs do that. It's not necessarily a cur in them. It's they're just fucking out of it, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there, there's a whole level to this shit. That's why I don't get caught up in the gameness and people talk about this and that and all. People, a lot of people talk about gameness that don't even know what gameness is. You know, it's not necessarily the one that can win every time or won every time. That was a whole good team behind that son of a bitch. I assure you of it. It, it's a different, it's a different thing than that. You almost got to be a game individual to understand what gameness is. You know, I know many men that are game to the bone. I've seen them game to the bone. They'll give it all. They ain't scared of nothing. Fearless. You know what I'm saying? But on the other ends of their spectrum, they're fucking, you know, you see him like, you ever go to jail with that guy? That's a bad son of a bitch. You get in jail two or three days later, that son of a bitch is crying. We're about to be a bedwetter. You know what I'm saying? Curring up on you. You know, that's the, what I'm saying. Certain people are different. It's the same with these dogs. You can take a dog. That's why dogs, you can see them. I have seen several dogs go in their puppy career to their career before being shown. Shown me a level of gameness that was so great. They go out and get ruined and then, and then they, they, they turn into a cur in 15, 20 minutes. What is that about? You see what I'm saying? It's a whole different element. The dog, yeah, the dog obviously wasn't deep game in the beginning, but he was game for this one, but not for that one. You see what I mean? There's, there's, it's a different thing in these dogs. You've got to understand them to be a good breeder. you got to understand them. And in certain families, though, are just predominantly, and you, the predominantly got a harder drive. That's why I like to breed hard driving, hard nosed bulldogs like these. these I, that's why I love doing the old school shit back into the new school stuff because you're putting a lot of your old school dogs or that's what they are they're just hard giddy up dogs you know what i mean they're giddy giddy up they don't have a lot of fancy moves <laughs> you know what i'm saying but and, and that's why i do that to cross them them two styles up you know because a lot of the newer stuff especially you know some of these other four-way crosses that are coming out they're very talented beautiful looking ballerina son of a bitches I just like to put some of that bowling ball in that ballerina once in a while, you know, and that's why I do that. But as far as being able to say you're breeding dead game dogs or, you know, all you can hope for is that you're breeding good quality, deep game, usable dogs that go into the right hands that have got a good concept of the dogs and know how to take care of them. That's another thing. If you take a good dog, how many times have you seen the guys that will take a dog and you'll see somebody will buy a young prospect and that prospect will go out for the first time he's out with the new people and that motherfucker will do great. He'll do great. He'll catch a fucking hog and slam that bitch for a loop, you know, And but he might get hurt. You know what I'm saying? If he gets hurt and he's not healed up properly, the next time he goes out, he don't do so great. He looks bad. He might even quit because it's just the whole thing, man. There's a whole team beside it. Y'all got to understand that. I have a lot of questions on that whole shit. It's just, there's a lot to it. it. There's a lot more to it than I like to get into. I don't really like talking about all that because now I'm just breeding good dogs for people to catch hogs with. But back then, there, you know, if we're going to talk about, I look at breeding my dogs today just like I did back then. I'm only going to breed the very best because these dogs are going to be in the woods. They're going to be in the swamps. I already know. I know that people get them. I'm going to make sure of that because I want this to continue where the best offspring of them are bred not just the junk because of their papers but the best offspring that way that family will continue and be strong you know if you keep if you're breeding just by uh chart numbers and and 
shit like that. It's, it's not going to work out in the long end. And that's what really counts in the long end. You want people to be able to enjoy that family for a long time. And it's got to hold together. And you got to have smart men behind it. Smart men make game dogs. That's a fact, Jack. Y'all take care and keep on bulldogging.